Okay, here's the second video of the 1960s, and it starts in 1964 uh, with the issue in Vietnam. Now, the issues in Vietnam have been recognized in 1954. If you go back to your notes from the 50s, uh, the French were overthrown by the, by the Vietnamese communists, the Viet Cong, uh, under Ho Chi Minh at the Battle of Dien Bien Phu, which he basically gets rid of the French and any kind of colonization. And we're going into this decolonization period as well, where you're starting to see a lot of European control moving away or getting kicked out of Africa, getting kicked out of Asia. And the same uh, issue is here, but the fear now again is that communist idea. So the communists uh, kicking the French out, communism beginning to spread in North Vietnam, obviously throws up uh, the red flag, no pun intended, for the Americans. So we begin to patrol. We send advisors down into South Vietnam to help uh, with these issues. And of course it leads to conflict. Uh, while we're on patrol down there, our ship, the USS Max, basically gets too close to North Vietnamese water, and it is shot. It is shot at by North Vietnamese ships. So it is not sunk. Uh, nobody's going to die, but it's the idea that war, a war act has happened. So when the information gets back to Lyndon Baines Johnson, LBJ, who's now the president after Kennedy's assassination, uh, he's asking for a declaration of war. He's going through the process <clears throat> that Congress has to declare war. Instead, what Congress does, and this is probably the biggest mistake of the Vietnam War, is that it gives him what is called the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution, which essentially gives the president full control over the war without any kind of congressional approval. Um, and that's not the case according to our Constitution. So here, you know, this Gulf of Tonkin Resolution now gives LBJ full-blown control over the conflict. And, of course, the conflict's going to drag out for many years, uh, and be very detrimental to our society. It's not going to work eventually in the long run. But it's a big deal because now we're into another hot conflict of the Cold War. The Korean War was really the first hot conflict. Here's the second hot conflict of the Cold War. Okay, So we're looking at the area. Uh, here's the Gulf of Tonkin. And you can see the Maddox under attack here and the movements it made. Of course, how close it is to uh, North Vietnamese water. All right, and here's the, the section of the world we're looking at in Southeast Asia. Uh, Vietnam, of course, tied directly to China here. Uh, North Vietnam become communists. Of course, you're going to have the issues with Laos uh, becoming communists as well. Uh, and the goal, and this is a, a more modern-day picture, the goal is to keep South Vietnam, uh, South Vietnam, South Vietnam, excuse me, uh, nationalist. All right, so the Vietnam War, 1964 to roughly 1973. You can make the argument even into 1975, but I choose 1973 because that's when the Americans are starting to get out. Um, the war itself moves on until 1975 when uh, Saigon, which is a major city of South Vietnam, is captured by the North, and it's called Ho Chi Minh City, and of course Vietnam becomes one communist country. All right, so here's the deal. Uh, it's going to be fought much different than previous wars because of where it's going to be located. It's going to be located in the jungle. It's going to be much more guerrilla warfare city warfare, street warfare. It's not going to be like what we saw in Korea where it was movements of troops across the 38th parallel back and forth. And it's definitely not going to be what it's like in um, the World War II, the World Wars in general. Uh, just it's going to be much more guerrilla type, okay? So because of this issue with knowing who's our friend and who's not our friend in Vietnam, uh, you have this idea of, of Operation Rolling Thunder. Uh, it's a bombing raid essentially that Americans are going to bomb heavy into North Vietnam and then move American soldiers in behind it. The problem with Operation Rolling Thunder is it becomes very, very predictable. The Vietnamese know how to hide. Again, they're, they're Asian soldiers. They fight uh, in a much different way than we're used to. They're going to rat hole themselves. They're going to hide. They're not going to wear uniforms. They're not going to do what is standard in warfare. And it's going to be very difficult for the Americans to fight. But this idea of oh, Operation Rolling Thunder is successful early, but the problem is what the Vietnamese figure out is that when American planes come in and bomb, they take cover knowing full well that the American troops are behind it and are able to take down the American troops. So it's a very, very good start, good offensive, but it becomes very predictable. Of course, you have the use of chemical weapons, uh, Agent Orange, Napalm, because of the jungle idea. You've got to burn these fields out. Okay, You've got to burn out the jungle to find where the North Vietnamese are. Again, <clears throat> very effective. However, long-term effects of cancer, uh, missing targets, these are all very big issues. Um, this is also going to be the first really major war that's going to be covered live almost by the media. Uh, everywhere the soldiers are going, the media is there with them, and they're able to send back those pictures right away. It's not like in World War II or even in the Korean War where pictures were sent 
back, videos were sent back, but they were posted with, um, they were posted with movies. Uh, this is when you turn on the news at five o'clock, you're seeing images from the day before in Vietnam. So of course you have the issue there of, are we there for a good reason? Are we there because we're supposed to be there? What's going on? And of course the media can skew uh, any which way they want to the information that's coming back. And of course the lack of support globally because now it's the Americans getting in the way again. Uh, this, this issue of containment trying to stop the spread of communism um, and really it, it's becoming so often, you know, going from Korea to this that is this really worth it? Is the global support there? And of course the American government believes it is because he stopped the spread of communism, but at what cost are we looking to do this? All right, so here are your major leaders of the war. Um, when it comes to actual leadership, government leadership, it's Ho Chi Minh of North Vietnam and LBJ, who is the President of the United States. When we look at military leadership, it's William Westmoreland of the United States and Vo Nguyen Gap of the North Vietnamese. Uh, these are all very, very important leaders because they're going to make a lot of the decisions that goes on as we move into the early stages of Vietnam. Okay, now, probably the turning point of the war, and it's actually an American victory when we look at it, is the 1968 Tet Offensive. And you got to understand 1968 in the United States, this country was in, in great turmoil. Um, you had the assassination of uh, Robert F. Kennedy on the campaign trail. You have the assassination of Martin Luther King in Memphis in the, in the racial divide. You have the assassination of Malcolm X uh, by his own people that's going on. You know, you have other issues where the turmoil is really, really turning over and boiling over that had been set up in the 50s, moved through the early 60s, but now it's at a breaking point where it's exploding. You know, you have riots in Chicago at the Democratic National Convention. There's a lot of craziness going on in the world. And then you had the Tet Offensive. And the Tet Offensive, essentially, uh, the Tet was the New Year for the Vietnamese. And it's usually understood that on New Year, any kind of holiday, <clears throat> there's no conflict that goes on. So most of the Americans in South Vietnamese were off base. They were allowed to go and enjoy the New Year. And of course, when they do this, North, North Vietnamese attack in a hundred different places throughout Vietnam. Now, the U.S. will win, but here's the thing now. It's showing a lot of what the war is because the media is there. And the media is sending information back. I mean, there's pictures of guys literally shooting their gun, doing an interview and shooting their gun again, okay? And it shows that the war really wasn't going the way the government said it was. The war, the government was telling the people in America that things were good, we're, we're doing okay, everything's going well, we're going to have this in no time. And it really wasn't the case. So support and, and the issues of peace and love in the United States, of course, with all the turmoil too and the chaos and rioting, are all starting to kind of turn over and the support globally is gone as well. We're not getting, we're there on our own right now, not getting the help we normally get when it comes to war. And it becomes a very, very detrimental part to the cause for us to try to stop communism. All right. So because of all this in 1968, obviously, Lyndon Baines Johnson does not run for re-election. Uh, Richard Nixon, Nixon runs for election. and He wins. Um, I think with RFK being shot and killed, it made the election for Nixon even easier. And what he promises is essentially law and order. He's going to try to fix the country. But he also promises bringing home these soldiers um, and promising peace with the war with honor for the soldiers who did fight because the, the mentality and the hatred towards the American soldiers even got worse. And really what he has, and you got to underline this, is what's called the plan for Vietnamization, this word right here. Uh, remove the U.S. troops and allow the South Vietnamese to fight for themselves. And this is a plan that most presidents put in place when it comes to war, except the problem is nobody is as strong as us, so it's very difficult to really, really be successful in this plan. But that's his goal, and of course people are going to get behind it bring the troops home, let the Vietnamese fight their own battle, and that's really Nixon's plan. But this is in 1968. Again, the war doesn't end for another until 1973, so another five years, really, before it can actually be successful. All right, and then finally, the biggest, another big issue, uh, and it goes to the space race. All right, and this is the issue, the improvements in math and science, the push to get uh, satellites in outer space in the 50s, the movement into men into space in the 19, early 1960s, but the goal is to get to the moon and in 1969, with the promise of JFK that in 10 years, the United States will land on a man on the moon, we land a man on the moon, okay? Uh, one small step for man, one giant step for mankind, as Neil Armstrong says, as he lands on the moon. Uh, it's a very big movement because now we take the lead in the space race, and that tension of the Cold War builds up once again.